President, President Vladimir Putin has reiterated that Russia does not want a war in Europe. At a joint news conference after talks with the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, uh, Putin said that Russia had decided to partially withdraw troops from near Ukraine. Putin called for further discussion with the West on Moscow's security demands. Putin said, however, that there had not been a constructive response to Russia's demands. Putin also said that Russia was prepared to continue dialogue on missiles and other security issues with the West. Tensions in Europe have run high in recent weeks on Western fears that uh, Russia may invade neighboring Ukraine, which Moscow's been denying uh, is its intention. Russia said on Tuesday some of its troops were returning to base after exercises near Ukraine. We see the forceful constraint of Russia as a direct threat to our national security, and legal obligations based on our drafts are meant to ease that threat. I repeat, the answers for our security guarantees proposals given to us by the United States and NATO do not address the three fundamental Russian demands. There are some points in the answers we are not only ready to discuss. In fact, it was us who suggested to our partners to discuss them back in the years. Regarding European security, certain weapons systems, I mean the middle and short-range missiles, military transparency, we are ready to continue our work. Do we want it war or not? Of course not. That is why we have offered our proposals to start the negotiation process, which should lead to an agreement of providing equal security for everybody, including our country. Dr. Alexander Titov is a lecturer in modern European history at Queen's University in Belfast. He joins us now via Zoom. Thanks very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Hello. Now, President Putin has received a number of high-profile guests uh, to try and talk diplomatically about uh, invading Ukraine. He says he doesn't want war and that people are accusing him of uh, wanting war uh, and are misunderstanding his request. Can we believe and trust him with 130,000 troops on the border? Well, I think uh, uh, kind of opening up the uh, intentions of uh, Russian president is a very difficult uh, task, uh, partly because uh, the kind of Russia's strength is in its conventional army and its nuclear forces. So uh, it's one of the kind of trump cards uh, Russia has over the West is this immediate superiority around uh, its own borders. Uh, therefore, it's uh, willing to use that, if not necessarily to invade, then certainly to intimidate. But the, uh, the, uh, the, the distance between intimidating and actually invading can be very thin mm. indeed. Uh, so uh, you can never be sure uh, what exactly they're doing, whether they're just intimidating, engaged in brinkmanship, or if they're actually trying to in, invade. I think they are uh, in, in, uh, engaged in brinkmanship, trying to force mm. uh, the West to negotiate on topics I, that are important to Russia, which, which your report has shown. Uh, the West, uh, the only way to do it is to show how serious they are to, for the West to really believe that Russia is about to invade. So it's a very... Um, dangerous games they're playing. So something that's happened in Ukraine today, uh, a cyber attack which has seen the major bank affected and also we believe the Ministry of Defense. Now some people will say that this is out of uh, Putin's playbook, that before a major strike that these are some of the things that are likely to happen. Um, are, are people reaching or is this a, 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 a coincidence at a critical time? Well, I think that, you know, you, you've seen a number of um, cyber incidents in um, uh, Ukraine in the last uh, few years. Uh, this is not particularly kind of um, a major one. Uh, earlier in December, you had several 
groups attacked, uh, sorry, several websites at uh, attacked government websites in Ukraine. It's all very difficult to attribute, of course, the uh, cyber attacks by the very nature. We don't know who exactly is it coming from Russia, is it coming from uh, state uh, agents, is it coming from uh, kind of individuals or um, uh, kind of uh, criminal organizations and so forth. So, there, you know, there's a whole range of it. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't read too much into it. I think uh, the issue of uh, uh, army presence on the borders, Russia's uh, willingness to uh, flex its muscles, cyber is just part of it. Uh, perhaps not the most important one so far as Ukraine is concerned, but it's certainly showing that. So, yeah, I think it's kind of an overall package of intimidation that certainly is, is there, but I wouldn't kind of say it, it, it was a kind of a major signal or anything like that. Ukraine's president declaring a day of unity. What does that mean? Um, is it saying that we are ready for you? Well, what, is he, what, is, what is the message? Well, it's very interesting uh, a point you're raising there because essentially uh, there's been a huge gap between rhetoric coming out of Washington and London about the imminency of Russian invasion and you know, American embassy evacuating from Kyiv, destroying all its computers and telephone systems and so forth. And Ukrainian president has been saying for weeks now that the whole thing is exaggerated, we need to calm down, we don't see the immediacy of Russian invasion. And in his message yesterday when he announced this National Unity Day, uh, he said again that there is no, uh, there is no major uh, form of concern. They don't see uh, that the Russian is about to invade immediately. So what they're doing instead is um, uh, kind of having this um, uh, day of uh, uh, rallying together, in many ways kind of using it uh, perhaps for internal politics to rally support around himself as somebody who is um, uh, well, standing up for Putin. But at the same time, you know, it's not something you'd, if you, were, if you really believed in imminent, imminent invasion, uh, raising flags and playing national anthem, it's not exactly uh, going to do much to stop it. So mm. it just shows that uh, in Ukraine itself, there are, you know, very serious skepticism about um, the actual danger of Russian attack, which is a big contrast to Washington and London, for example. Uh, Mr. Putin is being quite careful in the words that he uses. He says, we don't want war, we want peace in Europe, including Russian interests. Um, and I'm just wondering, where is the disconnect? Um, it, it, does he have genuine security concerns or is he just trying to push for an invasion at all costs at this stage? No, I think they have um, uh, genuine um, security concerns, which they've been articulating for many, many years, if not decades, since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, there are several issues uh, highlighted. I think they are quite genuine and serious about them, uh, particularly issue of uh, further NATO enlargement. Uh, they never liked like, NATO enlargement, even in the 1990s and 2000s, certainly don't like it now. Uh, they are uh, showing quite clearly that they are willing to go to war to stop it. Um, and a few, some other issues, such as the deployment of um, uh, intermediate range missiles in Europe, uh, which Americans left the treaty which was signed in 1987 by Gorbachev and Reagan and so forth. So, yeah, there are genuine security concerns. Uh, but uh, the way they're going about kind of making their point is by show of force and forcing the others to take, take them seriously on through the use of a threat of invasion. I don't think they want to invade themselves. They want to. Um, have a credible threat of invasion to force the mm. West to negotiate in politics. And it is a kind of, um, you know, worrying potential for it escalating into something nobody intends. And there is talk about an escalation of tensions. And sometimes we fear that, you know, this is the media feeding uh, uh, this, this idea. But if there is genuinely an escalation of tensions, are we close to a point of no return, do you think? No, I think they um, certainly in the last two days, um, the message from Moscow coming out is that they, they are willing to give uh, diplomacy another chance, that they finally, they, 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 what we call Western partners, are, are coming around to the idea that they need to talk seriously about issues important to Russia, uh, NATO enlargement, uh, missile defenses, and so forth. 
uh, and uh, they also said they were going to pull up back some forces. Uh, there is still an um, unresolved issue of eastern Ukraine, the breakaway separatist republics, uh, which they would like to uh, solve. Uh, that's still in limbo. Uh, so there is a kind of potential for a conflict there. Uh, but I don't think um, you know, the briefing from um, you know, Washington uh, that it's going to start tomorrow at 4 o'clock in the morning is, um, is particularly um, uh, plausible at this stage, uh, mm -hmm. given kind of the dynamic of the Russian statements and, uh, uh, and logic of uh, what they've been doing so far. The Americans have also been doing interesting things, releasing intelligence reports uh, suggesting that things like um, staged uh, attacks and, and all sorts of things uh, might happen um, before Russia strikes properly. Is that more to stop um, a preemptive strike or is this something typically Russia does? Well, I mean, you, you, uh, if the wars um, uh, start to conflict, it would originate in some kind of escalation in eastern Donbass, where there is a front line and there's a regular skirmishes over there, including artillery fire and so forth. Uh, the um, Russians are counter-briefing and accusing Americans and the Ukrainians of um, uh, trying to organize some kind of attack to trip Russia into war and so forth. So I would kind of, uh, that's kind of fit the pattern of both of them briefing against each other in the same way. Uh, yeah, I, I, in, in theory, I think if the wars, uh, if they wanted to kind of excuse to invade, they would need to um, organize something in East Donbass. Uh, mm. But that would be something quite major because there's been a lot of fighting mm. uh, on and off there for the last sort of seven years and assassinations, you know, the leader of the, pro-Russian um, um, rebels being assassinated in 2018, for example. Uh, Russian blame Ukraine for that. You know, they've been uh, shedding of each other. So, yeah, I mean, it's easy to kind of engineer something there, but um, uh, uh, it's still to be seen. I mean, there's no, been, there's no evidence been actually mm. given that it is going to happen. But if, if it were to happen, I would imagine it would be there. But uh, you know, we, we have to take each, each other's words yeah. for what they are without any evidence to back it up. It's difficult to say. What or, going on. We've seen this flurry of uh, diplomatic interventions. Um, Olaf Skultz, um, he's a new kid on the block uh, in, in many respects, the new German Chancellor. Um, do you think that he's just too new in the job or perhaps just the weight of Germany might help this? Well, I think Germany is a very important uh, country so far as Russia is concerned. It's its, it's main uh, European partner. It's the biggest uh, country in Europe. It has very close links in Russia economically, but also historically. Um, you know, uh, the Second World War defeat of Germany by the Soviet Union and our, our allies and so forth. So there is kind of this, this special kind of understanding and um, kind of history of um, engaging with Russia when everybody else is, is, is looking away from it. Uh, so far as he is a new kid on the block, well, I mean, they are, he's an experienced politician in any way, and he is somebody who is fresh coming up to solve the problems. And, you know, his predecessor, Merkel, she left the Minsk deal, which Germany and France helped to negotiate between Russia and Ukraine, uh, unresolved. Uh, and she couldn't do anything about it for eight years. So maybe actually it's a good thing. Uh, somebody new comes in with a with a fresh approach, with a fresh look, mm -hmm. and have another go. Uh, because it's clear that Moscow is getting very impatient with the West for not forcing Ukraine to implement the deal uh, they themselves help help them to sign. So uh, yeah, uh, it's it's it's. Uh, I think it's sort of uh, we should give him a little bit of a credit, mm -hmm. before, unless proven otherwise. All right. Perhaps final question on the balance of probabilities. Will Russia invade Ukraine? No, not not uh, in this period. Certainly mm. not when there is, uh, you know, its own on the uh, front lines of all the English-speaking newspapers, staying the date and the time and the, the place. I don't think Russia works in that way. Uh, Putin's kind of signature mark is is a surprise, uh, but more importantly, I think uh, it's there is nothing to gain uh, from actual invasion. They got what they wanted. 
by scaring the uh, Western Europe into negotiation with them. Uh, going any further actually would be counterproductive. So that's why I think uh, there will be no invasion. Dr. Alexander Titov, thank you so much indeed for joining us. Your insights are greatly appreciated on the program tonight. Thank you.